Thank you for tuning in to Belmont Journal. I am Eleanor Dash. There is a Belmont Town election on April 2nd in which there are three candidates in the running for two school committee seats. Joining us today is one of the candidates, Angus Abercrombie. Welcome, Angus. Thank you. So first off, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your family? Yeah, so um, I am Angus. I, I grew up in Belmont and um, you know, I, I came out of our schools just a couple of years ago. I graduated in 2022, and I'm now a student at Emerson College. Uh, in regards to my family, uh, I come from a long, a long line of education-involved individuals. You know, two of my grandmothers were educators. Uh, my grandfather on my mom's side um, was an educator with the British Royal Air Force, and uh, my mom is a college professor, BU, and... Even my sister substitutes in Belmont Public Schools uh, when she has the opportunity. So, you know, education is, is really central to a lot of the work that my family has done and how, how it's found its place. So, I guess, what first brought your family into Belmont and how long have you lived here? Well, I'm, I'm a lifelong Belmont resident. The first thing that brought me into Belmont was a car from the hospital. Uh, but my family came to Belmont in the, the late 90s uh, in to, to work at the university is in Boston, essentially. Um, and they've really enjoyed it here. Uh, you know, the schools are central to the draw when it comes to raising, raising a family in this town. Uh, they came here, had two kids, and uh, I think we turned out okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you're currently a student at Emerson. Yes. Is there anything specific that you're studying there? Yeah, so I'm studying political communication, economics, and environmental studies. Um, I work with a lot of organizations on campus as well uh, to, to advance their interests and, and, and work with um, curriculum and uh, budgeting programs as well. Okay, well, all very fun stuff. So how have you served Belmont over the years? You know, in a political capacity, the first time I was on a campaign in this town, I was 10. I was a fifth grader at, at what is now the Chenery Upper Elementary School and I was uh, leafleting for the override campaign. Uh, but, you know, service is a lot more than that. Uh, I volunteered a lot at the Habitat Sanctuary, the Mass Audubon Sanctuary on the Hill. I uh, spent, you know, hundreds, probably thousands of hours helping out there. Uh, and then uh, the, my first job was up there uh, on their property staff, supporting the educational programs that go on there uh, logistically. So, you know, I've... I've really been connected to a lot of the organizations in town, frankly. Uh, we have so many great, you know, one-time volunteer opportunities, and if I, if I had to go down and list them and thank the people who organized them for every single one, that would take our whole time slot. But, uh, you know, I, I really try and be out in the community, and, and, you know, I've met so many great people from that experience. Yeah, so why did you decide to run for school committee? I'm running for school committee because we need a fresh perspective, we need new voices, and we need a commitment to execution on the school committee. Uh, now, the first part of that, the, the new perspective, that's pretty obvious. Uh, if, you, if you look at who I am uh, against some of the people currently on the school committee, we don't currently have an educator or a recent student who's serving on the community who has been in a classroom full-time, a K-12 classroom, in this decade. And without that, without that perspective, we are missing out on the ability to effectively deal with issues like digital literacy and AI literacy, the impact of the pandemic, and how social media is affecting students' mental health and our classroom environments. Uh, so I'm running to bring back that perspective. I'm also running because with my experience in town government, uh, with my experience in communications and on campaigns. Uh, most of my work has been on political campaigns and advocacy campaigns. Uh, I am really wanting to help our students, our families, and our other stakeholders find where they can make a difference in town government. You know, we, when we have someone who has an idea or has a problem and they don't know who to talk to, well, they're gonna end up talking to someone and that is a waste of time for both the, the poor person on town staff who is not equipped to handle that issue and for the person who is having a problem and doesn't know where to go. So having a resource uh, on the school committee of someone who is there to help our, our, our students, our families, and our other stakeholders 
find where they can lean on the town to actually move it in the right direction is going to be huge. Uh, my record in town meeting is one of getting things done. Uh, this January, we passed an article at town meeting that started out as a petition that I'd brought in the fall. And that came out of a recommendation from 13 years ago. And it sat on a shelf for essentially 13 years, gathering dust, until you know, I, I talked to some leaders in town, and we took it off. And I went and stood on a street corner, got 120 signatures, and put it on the warrant. And here we are. So we really don't have time to waste in Belmont to move on our budget issues and to you know, bring our school system into the 21st century. Uh, so we need people who can start on day one moving policy forward. All right, so if elected, what would your top priorities be for the three-year term? I think the number one issue and therefore the number one priority is the budget. Uh, we are either going to have a successful override or a failed override, and I can go into that a bit more later on, but I think to say that my number one priority wouldn't be finding ways to reduce costs, finding ways to produce revenues, uh, would be uh, inappropriate. Uh, beyond that, I'm very concerned about mental health. I'm very concerned about digital literacy. Belmont actually lags the state of Massachusetts in access to digital literacy courses. And I think that's an area where we can make a real difference just by promoting the curriculum that we already have in the schools. Um, when we talk about mental health, if you look at the survey data, we have, you know, it's right around 10% of, of the population at the, the middle and high school who are considering suicide. I mean, that is terrifying. And it's those numbers, they were slightly different in 2021, but pretty similarly terrifying uh, that, that first got me to think about running for school committee. Um, and I put a good few years into learning the ins and outs of town government, and now here we are uh, to make that difference. So going back to your mention of the override, yes. so we've got that question coming up on the ballot as well with the town election. Where do you stand on this question? We've got two questions on the ballot this election. I'm voting yes on both of them. The override is central to my campaign for school committee, and it should be central to anyone running to get anything done in town. Uh, we cannot move if we do not have the money to fill our tank and get going. And this override is not a asking for gold-plated you know, services in town. It, it is the bare minimum to keep ourselves afloat. We should have passed an override in 2021. I'm glad we passed an override in 2015. But if you look at our schools, and this is again something that I think would be valuable to have someone who's been through Belmont Public Schools recently, we have fees that we didn't have 10 years ago. We have programs we've cut that we had 10 years ago. And that gradual chipping away of our school programming and of what we have accessible without a fee is very difficult to build back. But it is so much harder to build anything back if we take another $7 million sledgehammer to our budget. So let's say that the override doesn't pass and you are elected. What will you do to ensure students aren't negatively impacted by this lack of funds? Look, that question is frankly not giving me an accurate premise to work with. Uh, we, students will be affected. Students will be deeply and devastatingly affected by a failed override. Now the work we're gonna do we're going to invest in things like special education so that we can reduce our costs. We're going to look for opportunities to raise revenue. I think looking to rentals of school spaces, uh, how we can collaborate more effectively with the town government to reduce headcount in certain administrative roles and non-student facing roles where you know we have people on the town and in the schools who are doing the same kind of work. Uh, combining those, those roles and those services would be a step forward. But at the end of the day, there are going to be devastating cuts if this override does not pass. Dreadful, devastating cuts. We are going to be taking away the kinds of services, the kinds of opportunities that give our students community, that give them the opportunity to be ahead of the curve when it comes to admissions for college, when it comes to job applications, but also the kinds of opportunities to just exist in a space where they feel comfortable and supported. And when we don't have that, 
we talk about issues like mental health, like uh, providing for students with special education needs, all of these issues are going to be deeply and devastatingly impacted. So how do you think that the Belmont Public Schools can reduce its spending to prevent this need for future overrides? We're not going to be able to reduce spending in the long run because inflation is inflation and it's coming for all of us. But what we can do is bend the cost curve on a lot of issues. Right now, special education is a major driver of increases in the school budget. And the primary reason for that is that we have been apprehensive to invest in those services and to bring those services back into the district when, where they really should be. Uh, it is better for our students if they don't have to travel uh, to another community to attend class. It is better for our students if they can exist within our buildings and within our social environments in town. And frankly, it's also better for our budget if we are able to invest appropriately in special education and therefore provide students with the support that they need in that manner. So I think special education is one of the first places to start because of the fact that it is a mandatory services. In fact, we, we have to pay what we're paying right now. It is a huge part of the school budget. I mean, we're talking about around $10 million fiscal year to fiscal year, that changes, but 10 million out of 60 to 70 million is massive. I mean, that money could be going to so many better things if we were able to provide lower cost service and give those students a better service in Belmont. And you know, the work that the school department is doing right now shows that that is a possibility if we fight for it. So we're gonna fight for it. Uh, the other issues, I mean, I, I cited some of the revenue opportunities that we have. I think, I think renting out some of the new school spaces that we have. I mean, we spent $200 million and more, more than $200 million on building a nice new high school. And, you know, for a lot of the year and a lot of the week, it sits empty. That's an opportunity. Um, it's, a, it's a great space. And I think, I think we have opportunities there and in other places in the school department to, to create revenue that doesn't come from asking our families for fees, but that just comes from the assets that we have and utilizing them to, to get the best deal. So looking at the school committee as it is now, what do you think their most pressing problems are? Look, I think the number one issue, again, is the budget. Uh, but the problem is the school committee doesn't get to set the budget number that the schools get. And so I think when it comes to an issue that the school committee can take direct action on, I think we need to be talking about those newer problems, things like social media, things like digital literacy, like AI. Uh, and those are issues that I think our current school committee is, is under-equipped to address because of the fact that we, we don't have people who've been in classrooms full-time facing those issues, like AI, like social media, digital literacy, being able to use the tools that we now have that can make education more efficient and cheaper. Uh, but if we're unable to provide our educators with guidance on how to use those tools, what are we doing? Um, so I, I really want to make sure that those become a priority. So as a student and someone who's gone through the Belmont Public Schools, what issues relating to the school system concern you? I think I have to go back to mental health. Um, you know, the budget is a really important issue to everyone in Belmont. Uh, but when we talk about something that, that I have really seen rip through student experiences in our schools, it, it is mental health. Uh, you know, I, I've had assignments that I turned in late back when I was a student because I was up on the phone with a friend of mine uh, who just needed that level of support that night. But that's a lot of our students. Uh, when we look at the data, a whole lot of our students are in a place where they aren't showing up feeling safe. They aren't showing up feeling happy. They aren't showing up able to learn. And what that means is not only that those students are negatively impacted because they aren't able to take full advantage of our services, but also that our educators and our other uh, faculty at the schools are having to do more to support those students and therefore less to support our other students. When we provide adequate support for mental health, and that doesn't just mean social workers, that means having extracurricular opportunities, that means having community support in, in our schools. You know, when we cut 
if we cut something like athletics or like uh, the musical theater program at the high school, which is a reality that we are going to have to face in a no override scenario, that is going to do a number on student mental health. Now, we're also going to have to cut social workers in that situation. Uh, we have four social workers in our public schools that are funded on the American Rescue Plan funds, which means that uh, not this coming year, but the following, if we can't find that money in the general fund, they're gone. So I think mental health is going to be really the issue of our time in, in education, making sure that students show up to class ready to learn. And that means more than having a pencil. That means being in the right headspace and feeling safe. So taking a look at these issues that you brought up, how do you think that you can help to make things better in the Belmont public school system? So many of these issues come down to what we can do to either support directly student experiences or to make changes on the back end that aren't going to hurt our students. Uh, when we are dealing with a tight budget, we really need a good understanding of the kinds of things in, in our school buildings, in our classrooms, that students themselves find the most impactful and that our educators find the most impactful. The fact that we don't have the perspective of either a recent student or a current educator on the school committee means that we aren't doing that job well enough. Uh, we need that perspective back so that we can adequately make those conversations accurate, uh, make sure that we are reflecting the values that our classrooms need in order to, to support themselves. I'm also running as someone who's going to get things done on the school committee. I mean, when I look at town government, it is a daunting and difficult machine to move anything through. Uh, but we can do it. When you're committed, when you talk to the right people, when you find consensus, when you build coalitions, you can get there in town government. And that's work I've already done. It's work that we need to do in order to tackle any of these issues in our schools because the budget is a huge example of an area where we need collaboration. So that is going to be one of my main starting points is working to move those budget issues through the town government so that we can have support and we can have collaboration at every opportunity. I mean, we have ideas from things like the Structural Change Impact uh, Group um, who put together you know, a, a number of ideas about uh, what we can do in the schools and in the town to streamline services, to reduce costs. And a lot of those suggestions are sitting on shelves. Uh, gathering dust. So we also, and I should add, we also have a lot of work from, from parents, from families, from students themselves who have come up with ideas and brought them to the school committee and get told, this needs to wait until next academic year. Or, oh, we're really close to September. Maybe we should wait to implement this. And quite often, you know, that's the reality of the situation. But then we kick the can down the road again and again. And again, and at some point, we need to say, no, that's enough. We're going to do this. We're going to either say, this is a bad idea for our schools, or we're going to say, we're doing it. And we don't say we're doing it often enough, but, you know, my record is, is of doing it. And so we're going to get things done. All right. So as we reach the end of this conversation, why should someone vote for you on April 2nd? Belmont doesn't have time to waste when it comes to dealing with our budget issues, when it comes to tackling issues of digital literacy, of social media, and the impacts of the pandemic. We need someone who can start on day one with connections with town leaders, with experience working on our budgets and other issues in town. And we need someone who has the perspective that it's going to take to advance the priorities that are relevant to our classrooms, relevant to our students in Belmont to make things happen in our schools. The work of the school committee is difficult and complex, but when we have the right priorities and when we have the experience to actually move things along, that is when our best work happens. So I am running to bring that perspective and I am running to get things done and I humbly ask for your vote. Well, Angus, it was a pleasure getting to know you better today.
And for everyone watching, the town election is April 2nd. Thank you for tuning in to Belmont Journal. Until next time.